What's going on everybody? It's your boy Payne. Welcome back to another solo leveling arise video. All right guys, we just finished a five hour stream. I'm still up. It's a 2.30 a.m. Uh, and I have a video I want to put out before I go to bed. And I think this is an important one because it will cover a lot of information and questions people have uh, regarding two number two big, really big things. Okay, number one, we're going to do an artifact video right now. The next one I'm going to do is EXP and gold. I think that's a very important one. A lot of people are asking questions. So let's talk about artifacts. Artifacts are a very big part of this game. And they're going to make or break your account depending on how you farm them. And just like any other gotcha RPG, it's all about RNG and stats. Okay, so what are artifacts? First question. Artifacts are going to be your gear sets. Okay, so these are the gear sets. There are various different gears that drop in different places. First thing you're going to do when you when you can equip artifacts is be able to equip the first four. Once you unlock your next job, which is the Shadow Mancer, you're going to be able to unlock uh, two accessories. And then when you finish stage uh, chapter 12, you're going to be able to unlock the last two accessories. Now, there are different sets that have different effects. And I'm going to talk about these sets real quick. And when I do character showcases individually, I will explain each set and what character belongs to which set, okay? Or which set belongs to which character. Jesus, stop calling me out, bro. I know it's been six hours. Um, so first off, where do you get artifacts? So this is important, okay? A couple of different places you can get them. Number one, the gates. The gates are going to be available to you to use using your gate keys. And every single gate that you pull on, you're going to have an opportunity, depending, of course, on the gate that you choose, to get yourself some of these um artifacts okay so for example if i go to this s rank one you guys can see here there's an opportunity to get myself one piece of gear ranging from uh, common to rare to epic okay well then legendaries are yellows now there are different sets of gear for everybody okay so everyone can wear whatever you want but there are specific sets that work best with certain characters i'm going to show you a couple examples as well so for example one of these ones here is going to be the crit set so right here it's called toughness and two of the, the two set effect gives you 8% crit rate. And then the four set effect gives you 32% more crit damage. Okay, so very important to note. There's this one over here, which is break. So this is the solid analysis set. This one with two sets gives you break increased damage by 15%. So when someone is in break status, you do 15% more damage. And then with the four set, when attacking the weakness attribute increases break effect by 30%. So incredibly powerful four set for break units such as Wu, um, Lim, etc. Right? So very, very good for them. If you look at this set here, this is the guardian set. This is a shielding set. So anyone who uses a shield or can produce a shield or even a weapon that can give you a shield increases the shield effects by 30%. When a team member, including the player, activates a shield. So in case you have the uh, demon longsword or the Vulcan's Rage, whenever that shield pops up, it increases the damage dealt by everybody by 10% for 10 seconds. So very, very powerful uh, thing with a shielding um, artifact. Now keep in mind, with artifacts, every time you swap artifacts out, it costs you gold, so it can get very pricey, so make sure you're equipping correctly. Then you have this one over here, which is called the Noble Sacrifice. This increases the user's HP by 8%, but also decreases the user's attack by 8%, but increases everybody else's attack by 8%. This is incredible for units such as Min. Min's, all of Min's moves, all of Min's attacks, everything is HP based. So it increases his HP, but he's a healer. So you'll sacrifice 8% of his attack, but give everybody else 8%. So these are great for someone like him. Uh, you've got yourself the ultimate skill one here, one hit kill, which will increase your ultimate skill by 25%, but also increases or decreases the cooldown by 40%. So there are a lot of different sets. Okay, I'm going through three more here. This is the attack set here, right? Called the uh, the armed. Increases the user attack by 5%. When attacking, ignores 15% of the target's defense and attacks. This one here, for example, is amazing, amazing for Choi because Choi can't do any crit hits. Shout out to you guys for reminding me of that to check out his passive. So you want to build him with all attack and defense ignore, and he's going to do so much better with this set, right? So just giving you some examples here. And this one here is so anyone who does really good with basic attacks. So this is good for Wu or anyone like um, Emma Laurent. Anyone who does any basic attack damage, right? Also increases core uh, damage by 18%. And when the attack hits, core damage gauge by 60. This is also really good for um, Dong Su, who is the wind unit. And then lastly, we have the um, destroyer set. Your power gauge acquisition rate increased by 20%. Your power gauge is your uh, ultimate gauge, I believe. I think that's what that is, right? Uh, when the battle starts, charge power gauge by 50% and additionally increase the player and the party's power gauge acquisition by 20%. So very, very powerful sets and you guys can get these in different places. So let's talk about where to find them. That's the more important part. So yes, these gates are not a bad choice, but they only drop as you see here with Epic and that starts with gate difficulty 12, all right? So keep that in mind. It's not like you can get them with any gate you want. 
going back to the actual proper places to farm these are going to be in the Encore missions, all right? So the first two bosses you're going to unlock are only going to drop four sets. They're going to drop the attack set, the crit set, the HP set, and the break set, okay? So those are the only sets they drop. If you go through the entire tier, you guys can see you guys can get legendary sets and you guys can get epic sets, but it's only the four pieces. So the other pieces start dropping from the following two other units, specifically boots and hands from Cerebrus, and they start dropping all the other pieces as well. You guys can see right here, the one hit kill, uh, the Guardian, etc. So to get these higher end sets, you have to actually farm Cerebrus, and he only drops the feet and the hands, and they did this on purpose. For the Spider Arachnid boss, he drops the helmet, and he drops... I think that's it, actually. Just the helmet. Oh, body. Helmet. <laughs> So there's one more piece, helmet and body, okay? So these bosses have to be kind of farmed in different in different tandems. Now this one's weak specifically to water, this one's weak to light, so you're gonna need to get a couple of these units because they do, in fact, take way less damage from their uh, opposite effects. So this is where you farm. Now to get keys, you'll get refresh of three of them a day. You can also purchase additional keys at the shop with an exchange, or you can spend with diamonds to get two of them. I think it's 150 for two, then it goes to 200, and it goes increasing every single time. It's free to play, you never wanna do that. But this is the place, the main place, you're going to farm this stuff. Now, for accessories, when you unlock it, instant dungeons also require keys. There are two bosses. There are the Lycan bosses, and you can see Igris here. Lycan bosses drop two sets, a ne necklace and a ring, or a necklace and a bracelet, I believe. Yeah, a necklace and a bracelet right there. And then Igris will drop earrings and uh, a ring, okay? So when you unlock that, this is requiring to finish chapter 12. So this is where you will farm these different places and different items. Now, with the couple things you need to note, with artifacts, when you equip them, you can equip two different sets. You, don't, you can equip no sets at all if you just like the stats, but the stats do matter quite a bit. And I'm gonna share with you guys what the base stats are for every single one of these, okay? So for helmets, the base stat is always going to be uh, random. So it's additional HP, additional defense, additional attack. You guys can see it's HP percentage, etc. So these are very important to pick the proper helmet, okay? So this sometimes will dictate over the set what's more important to you. So for example, if you're building somebody with pure attack, you may want to get attack, additional attack instead, and don't worry too much on the set. But if the additional attack is on the attack set, like this one, it does matter. Also, keep in mind, the actual level does matter. The higher the level, see level 45 versus level 25, the higher the numbers in the stats go. The higher the rarity, the more initial stats you get from the beginning. So you can see common gives you two stats. If I want to enhance this, in order to open up all the other stats, I have to go to level 15, okay? If I do it to a rare, on the other hand, I only have to go to level 10. If I do it for an epic, I only have to go to level 5, and legendary just gives you all of them up front. The reason why that's important is every time you enhance, you either unlock a stat, if you don't have it unlocked, or if you have like a legendary, every single enhance that's 5 levels will go right into a stat, increasing that stat even more. That's why it's so important to hunt epics and legendaries for the first little while you're going to go with rares you're going to go with commons but you're going to eventually have to switch to epics and legendaries to get better stats overall okay so very very important so keep in mind helmet does have random stats body always has additional defense always there's no don't even bother looking for anything above that okay it's always going to be additional defense for hands it's also going to be additional attack it's always additional attack again do not look for anything else as the main stat every other substat though does matter okay and then lastly you have yourself the feet so these are the main four okay these actually give you different stats as well and you can actually get critical hit damage and defense penetration healing given so there's a lot more options in the feet stats for things like crit and you definitely want to aim for those especially for crit characters or you want to go for defense penetration for anyone who is an attack character okay keep that in mind now going over to necklaces necklaces give you random things as well too but this all give you additional hp as the main stat the necklace is always additional hp and then the actual bracelet right here Okay, you guys can see it gives you random stats gives you either elemental stats can also give you I think it's always all elemental actually if I remember yeah it's all elemental stats so make sure you're looking for the proper element for the character you're using and then rings here will give you uh, attack or random stats based on attack when you unlock that again it's chapter 12 and then earrings I have no idea yet I haven't unlocked it yet so that's pretty much how that works so again you're gonna need to farm all of that remember level matters okay it's gonna matter a lot now as you level them up so I'll show you guys real quick. Keep in mind what you want to build your character as. Now, Sun Jin Wu, 
uh, has no actual limits. You can build them however you want to build them. That's the beauty of being the player, right? But the characters, the hunters, actually do have requirements. So, for example, we talked about Choi, and I'll, again, I'll do a full-on breakdown of every character. If you look at his artifacts, right, you can see here I've got a full attack set on him, the Executioner set, okay? The reason why that's important, of course, is the fact that he cannot do any form of crit. If you look at his passive, you can see here it specifically says Choi Jong-In cannot deal crit hits, but his attack is increased by 40%. So you don't want to put the crit set on him because then you're wasting a full set on him completely, okay? Someone like uh, Lim, all of his attacks are based off of his max HP. Look at this, user max HP, user max HP, user max HP, user max HP, and the list goes on for max HP. So for someone like him, the basic artifact set you want is the Noble Sacrifice because it increases his HP, decreases his attack, which is fine, and then gives everybody 8%. So those are examples of how you want to build your characters. Again, I will go through that in more thoroughness once I get a chance. You guys can see he's a light character, so I gave him the light damage ring. And then here he's got additional HP because everything is based off of HP. So all I'm looking for is his healing and his HP for him. That's what matters the most for him. All right, guys, I hope this kind of gave you a breakdown of artifacts work. If you have any comments or questions, let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them in the comment section when I have the time. Much love to you guys. Thank you for the support in all the videos. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.